In order to allow DateSnap server and mobile applications to interact with each other, you have to follow a few steps. The first one is enable REST interface in the mobile connectors on your DateSnap server. After that, you have to expose the business logics on your server to the server methods. Having these business logics exposed to the server methods, you just need to generate the proxy class for the platform you are looking for. In this video, we are going to see how it works with Android applications. We are going to generate the proxy class for Android platform. Here is my C++ Builder IDE. You will see that you can start creating your DateSnap REST application through the DateSnap wizard and define if you want to use a console, a standalone TCL application or ISAP, what the port, HTTP port you are planning to use. Here are some options that you can customize how it's going to be created your DateSnap server. In this case, we have to enable the mobile connector, which is going to implement the proxy dispatch for mobile on your server. We can ask the DateSnap to just create some sample methods and the sample web files, which is really important because you can start testing all of all of your server methods through the, the, the web page. You don't need to create a client to test if you have this, this option selected. Let's define the server module as an ancestor for my main server class. And you define the folder where you're going to use, we're going to create your project. I already have a pre-built server. When I create the pre-built server, this is pretty much is exactly what the wizard created for me. I just added this little nice icon here. And as you can see, I can start and stop my server. This is, this is in C++. So this function here is pretty much just starting my, my C++ server and nothing else. So when you come here on the server module, you can see that I have the two server, the two methods created as a sample for me, which is the reverse string and the echo string. And also I implemented here two methods, which one is the insert country, which is going to insert a record on the country table. And the other one, get countries, which is going to return a list of countries from my database. I'm going to return a DBX header to the client side. I have here a the SQL connection with interbase. I can use any other database. And on the web module unit, this is a very interesting part. I have my server, the HTTP web dispatcher, and also I have the proxy dispatcher that's going to generate the cl proxy class for me. So in this case, the proxy dispatcher is connected with the proxy generator and you can use the proxy generator to create the proxy class in C Sharp for Silverlight, which is Windows Phone, C++ Builder, Delphi, Java for Android, Blackberry, JavaScript, and Object C with iOS. Having this, you pretty much have everything you need to start implement server methods and expose business logics to the client side. Look and, and run this server and see how you can start testing the two methods uh, I implemented here on my server module, the insert country and the get country. So I have my start test. Look, I can open the browser and automatically I have the survey function option, which is a page I have to start testing all of, all of the methods I have implemented in the server. If I come back, go back on my application and change or add a new server method, this is going to be refreshed here on, on this page. It happened because Dynamic, the web file dispatcher, has an event here on the before dispatcher, and any change I have on my, on my server, it's going to regenerate the server function.js which is the server class, the class proxy for JavaScript. So all of the methods we have here is going to be executed to, through JavaScript. So let's say I wanna, uh, for example, add a new country here, and I'm gonna say I wanna uh, choose, let's say, Japan, and currency for Japan, this error parameter here is a error parameter I pass as a reference in case I have any error during the process to insert this country that this parameter is going to be returned for me. So if you look here the implementation on my server, just take a look and see any exception is going to return for the error parameter here. 
So in the C++, this is how it happened. So in this case here, I have a error because Japan is already added to my table. So I have a primary key violation. You can just come here on your data explorer inside the, the C++ IDE and select the data you have on this country table. So you're going to see I have Japan here already added. Let's delete these two countries I have, two records, and let's try to add here a Brazil, for example, and execute. So I execute, result true, no error. So if I try again, I have a primary key violation. In the case of get countries, which there is no parameter and it just returns a DBX header, it, I just execute and let's take a look at the result here. The result is a JSON object which contains all of the records in the columns and the values for each column on my on my record record. So you can do whatever you want with this return. So that's pretty simple, pretty easy, but it's pretty powerful because any new method you add to the server, you just need to come here and and refresh the page and that's it. You can test, you don't need to create a new client or a new implementation to test the method you are you're looking for. Now let's take a look and see if you want to connect an Android application through your DateSnap server and execute the server methods. So Android applications built in Java and you have to use Eclipse in this case to build your application. So uh, here I have a project, an Android application, which I just create through the new file new order and I choose Android project. Okay, and after that I have to change the Android manifest and add a user permission to access the internet because this application is going to access uh, uh, the internet, the, the, the my server, so, and I need internet connection for this case. So after that, I build the layout, which is uh, represented by XML file. So take a look here. It's really simple. So I have to uh, edit text. So you can drag and drop the components from the tool palette here. I have two buttons, insert and refresh, and a list view here. It's pretty obvious, so I'm going to add insert the country, and I'm going to refresh and re uh, return the list of records I have in the country table. So when you look at the code here in Java, uh, you just need to reference each object. Each object you want to reference from, from the, your screen, you need to reference here in the code, so you have to locate these objects through the find view by ID. And I have an instance here, a variable, which represents an instance of these objects on, on the design time. So uh, when I click on the object, on the button insert, I execute the insert method. When I click in the button refresh, I execute the refresh method. But what's happening here is, so since you have your Android application and you wanted to connect to this application, to your DateSnap server, you need to generate the proxy class in Java. So in this case, you can go through the URL. So you can just come here and type localhost proxy Android Java underline Android dot zip, and you're gonna download your application here. So in this case, my server is not running right now. So that's why I the, the server, the, 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 the file didn't come up. So in this case, let's go here on my on my server. When the moment you create your project, you will see a proxy directory, a proxy folder under your under your application folder. So this proxy has four different folders, which is for Windows Phone, Java for Android, Java for BlackBerry, and Object C. At the moment you compile this application and run, you have under the debugger release folder the same proxy directory. Okay, that this folder are the basic class you need to start using the, 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 the proxy in other languages. So all of the, for example, the REST connection is here in C sharp. So you have a DES REST connection, which is the object you you need to make 
the initial connection, the initial request. So that's the object you have here. So you have this object in C sharp. You have Android for in Java for Android. Okay, and also you have an object C. So you have the three three basic languages you will need to use. So now uh, I need to generate the proxy class for my application. Like I said, you can generate through the HTTP, or you can just come here through the proxy downloader and generate using the Winter 2 proxy downloader command line, pass the language you want, which is the name of the folder you saw on the pro under the proxy folder, where is your server in the output directory. At the moment you do that, so you need to have your server running. So in this case, my server here is not running. Let's make the server running here. And at the moment you just execute, it create here under my, uh, my Java project. He bring all of the basic class plus the DX proxy proxy file. So the DS, DS proxy file has all of the methods exposed by the server. So I have here the insert country and also I have the get countries here which returns a DBX header. So as you can see I have a DBX header implementation for Java. In this case since I'm using REST it goes through uh, I got a, as a return a JSON object and instead to parse any and work with the JSON objects, I'm going to use the DBX header. I'm going to use the DB Express classes on the language uh, you are uh, uh, you are in the platform you are using for your mobile application. So that make much easier, much simple this interaction between mobile and the server on the uh, in the DateSnap server. So how I execute each one of those server methods I implement to the server. So let's start with the insert. Okay, and the insert is really simple. I just have this instance of the DS REST connection, which is my REST connection for the DateSnap server. The get connection method here, as you can see, set the host with my IP address in the port. Let's double check here and see if my IP address is 192.168.254.128 that's the correct IP address the port and the return instance of the DS REST connection so in this case here I create an instance of tserver method 1 which is the name of my class on the server and I, I execute the insert country since I'm using um, a passing a parameter as a reference in the C++ which is the error message in this case, I, I'm not I'm passing yeah, empty string here, but I'm gonna get not only the boolean if it's if it was executed in set counter or not, but I'm gonna get a error message in case uh, some error during the execution of insert. So in this case, the proxy class return an object for me, which is insert country. And this insert country has, as you can see here. Uh, return value which is the return for this function and also has the error which is which is the error message so in case i don't i uh i the return value is false i'm gonna print the error message here so that's it that's the only thing i do in this case okay and the other method is the refresh. So the refresh method is very simple as well. So I get an instance of my DS REST connection, instantiate the server method class, and I execute get counters and I get a header, which is a DDBX header. So I just create an array list of string, interact through the DBX header, add all the records into this array list, and I pass this array list to the list view. That's pretty much what I do. So let's now execute this application using the Android simulator and let's see this application in action. My Android application talking with my DateSnap server. So the Android phone started, the simulator. So I have here my application. Let's add the country as Brazil, the currency, and I'm gonna hit the insert button. So when I do that, 
it insert the record on my table. So let's take a look in here and I see Brazil on my, my servers, on, on my database. Let's refresh. When I click refresh, you can see here, the Brazil is here as well. So let's see if I add another one Brazil to, and the refresh, you're gonna see I have Brazil to here. So that's the easiest way to make your interaction between the DateSnap application and the Android application and your DateSnap server. So you can reuse all of the business logics you have in your DateSnap server with any other platform. In this case, I was using the DateSnap connector to generate the prox, the client, the prox classes, and you can generate the prox for Windows Phone, Android, BlackBerry, and iOS as well.